Our goal at Estimate Writers is to help you learn how to take good field notes so your estimates can be prepared and exact to make. The information contained here is necessary for all estimators everywhere. Show up at every appointment with the following. A pencil is much better than a pen. I recommend a mechanical pencil with 0.9 millimeter lead. Make every entry careful, carefully so we can all read it. Plain paper and a clipboard. Graph paper and lined legal pads make your drawings harder to read and to copy. Tape measure and or laser measuring tool. A good la laser measuring tool is a Bosch. It cost about $100. I tried a uh, straight line, cost about, a tw about $20. The $20 was a waste. A camera or a smartphone camera. Take overall pictures. Interior rooms take one overall picture per room. Exterior, one picture per each elevation, standing way back. Roofs, make sure the entire roof is shown in your pictures in as few pictures as necessary. Set the ground quality level of your camera down so space isn't wasted for emailing. If you don't have these things, go back and get them. If you're on the if you're gonna be on the roof, you're need, gonna need a ladder and a pitch gauge. Let's draw your numbers, write your numbers like this, feet and inches, not fractional inches, but do include inches, even when it's zero. And too many numbers in your estimate that are rounded up like to a zero indicate that you're ballparking, and that is never acceptable in, exact, in, in insurance billing. Draw a simple room like this. Leave an opening for the doorway. Measure from drywall to drywall, not through the door to the middle of the door or anything like that, just drywall to drywall. Uh, measuring above the base and quarter round if there is any. Put the numbers inside the room. Here's the same room with a closet. This closet is two feet five inches deep, wall to wall, not through the door or anything like that. This same room can become two rooms, this wall, and this wall, and this wall, from here to here, is the same measurements, all 13 feet. This room has part of it missing because this is a linen closet from the hallway side, so this becomes a closet, a room, and an and another separate little rectangle. We need two measurements on every rectangle. This, this, this is how this would look if this had been more rooms involved. After we've drawn the first room and the second room, it's easy to just keep going, right, drawing lines proportionally until you've got all of the areas affected. When you run out of room, you can do things like this writing the number between these two lines. You can write outside the wall if you need to. In this room we had to write an arrow and then it come across the tub. That would indicate that those measurements do not take out for the tub. On an L-shaped room we want you to look at it as two rectangles. This living room is, is its own. Here's the dividing line and this rectangle, the dining room, has two measurements. The living room has two measurements. This is a much more difficult room. What you have to do in a case like this is stand in the room somewhere and start drawing. Just start somewhere. And draw your the lengths of these walls proportionally. You can learn how to do this. Nothing lines up here. None of these walls line up. So, this being the case, we need every segment of this room measured. Yes, every wall needs to be measured. We've assumed in these other drawings that the roofs, the ceilings were flat and that they were eight feet. 
ceiling heights can be anything. In this particular room, we're showing that this, this ceiling is sloped. We put an arrow like so to indicate that this ceiling slopes up from this point. The low wall is 8 feet. CH stands for ceiling height. The high wall, which is all of this, is 11.7. If the room is, if the ceiling of the room is peaked, and in this case peaked in the very center, we can draw a, a dotted line or dashed line like that, and we indicate with the arrows again that this roof slopes up from both walls, and in this case the ceiling height at the low point is 8 foot and at the high point it's 10 foot 7. Again this is when the peak is in the middle of the room. When the peak is not in the middle of the room you can indicate it like this. We, we may need three ceiling heights because this wall will not have come back down to the 8 foot like the other wall probably so we need those three ceiling heights and then how far the peak is from either wall. We've put both numbers here, but either one of them would have worked. And that's a floor measurement. That is not measuring the ceiling. That is that point on the floor that is equal to where that peak is on that ceiling. That's all of the first lesson. Thank you for listening. Let's all go to work. Thank you.